good afternoon everybody hope you're all healthy and safe at home uh, let us continue with our uh, chapter of hilbert spaces uh, chapter 2 hilbert spaces section 2.2 so in the last lecture we had discussed about the definition of the term called projection and uh, we had also done a proposition related to the same now in this lecture what we are going to do is we are going to do another proposition which uh, depicts the uniqueness of the projection of a closed subspace of H. So the proposition 2.2.2 it states that let L be a closed subspace of H for all X element of H there exists a unique Y element of L such that X minus Y is orthogonal to L and Y equal to PL of X. So if we consider Hilbert space H and its corresponding closed subspace then we can always find for any element in the Hilbert space H we can always find a unique element in the closed subspace L uh, which forms the projection and also X minus Y will be orthogonal to L. So let us see how we can proceed with the proof of this theorem or a proposition okay so first of all let us consider the space H and uh, let L be the closed subspace of H let L be the closed subspace of H as it is given in our proposition now what we are going to show is we are going to show y belongs to L that is there exists a y element of L such that y is equal to P L of x if and only if x minus y is orthogonal to L. So what we are going to show we are going to show that in the closed subspace uh, element which forms the projection should exist if and only if x minus y orthogonal to l. Now we will prove this and we will see how we can relate it to the proposition. So first uh, this is if and only if condition. So first of all let us suppose that y is an element of l and y is equal to pl of x. Okay and uh, such that x minus y is orthogonal to L. Now for any element say z element of L what can we write we can get x minus z sorry x minus z can be written as x minus y plus y minus z adding and subtracting the term y okay so this implies norm x minus z square which is nothing but inner product x minus z x minus z okay so this is again nothing but norm of x minus y square plus norm of y minus z square so what we are going to show is how did we get this term we can see that this is in a product x minus z into uh, comma x minus z now we know that x minus z we had written it as x minus y plus y minus z so if we uh, replace this i'm just going to show how did this two become equal so if we replace uh, let us consider x minus z in a product x minus z x minus z that is nothing but in a product x minus y plus y minus z comma x minus y plus y minus z i am just replacing the term x minus z by x minus y plus y minus z now if we open uh, the or if we expand the inner product what do we get this is 
nothing but x minus y x minus y that is inner product of x minus y x minus y that is nothing but uh, norm of or let me write x minus y x minus y and we get inner product y minus z x minus y then the next term will be x minus y y minus z inner product x minus y y minus z and again last one y minus z y minus z y minus z y minus z right so this first term and the last term is norm x minus y square and uh, this is norm y minus z square so how come these two terms have become or they have reduced to zero now let's just take those terms individually and see you can see that uh, let us take i'm taking just one of them say x minus y y minus z was one of the inner product again if we expand this we can write this as inner product of x minus y comma y okay plus say x minus y comma z so we had uh, assumed that x minus y is orthogonal to l okay so if x minus y is orthogonal to l then we had seen that y is an element of l and z is also an element of l so in a product will be nothing but zero clear uh, by our assumption of x minus y being orthogonal to l we can say that in a product x minus y comma y uh, will be zero also in a product x minus y comma z will also be zero because y and L, y and z are elements of l so that is how we can see that norm of x minus z square what we had written in the beginning that is norm of x minus z whole square is nothing but norm of x minus y square plus norm of y minus z square so this is definitely greater than or equal to norm x minus y square right because what is this, this is x minus y square plus some other term so this norm x minus z whole square is always greater than or equal to norm of x minus y whole square and uh, we had chosen an arbitrary element z and uh, of l and we have obtained that norm of x minus y whole square will always be less than or equal to norm of x minus z whole square so taking in removing the square roots again we will get that norm of or taking square root on both the sides removing the square we get this is less than or equal to norm x minus z so what we get we can conclude that as z was chosen arbitrarily we can conclude that the infimum of norm x minus z where z is an element of l is equal to what norm of x minus y because at norm x minus y is always less than equal to norm x minus z so the infimum will be equal to norm x minus y so by the definition of projection we can say that y will be the projection of x okay so this is one part that is we had assumed that x minus y was orthogonal to l and we have proved that y is an element y is equal to pl of x now let's see the converse part what is the converse part we'll assume that uh, now let us assume conversely Conversely, suppose that y is equal to PL of x. Okay. Now we need to show. What do we need to show to prove that x minus y is orthogonal to L? Now, so for that, let us choose an element. Is that element of 
L. Okay. Now, let me see. Then, norm of x minus y whole square will be less than or equal to norm of x minus y plus lambda z square. By the definition of norm, uh, norm x minus y whole square will always be less than or equal to norm x minus y plus lambda z whole square. Now, what is this? This is by definition of um, or by the relation between inner product and norm. This is x minus y inner product x minus y lambda z x minus comma x minus y plus lambda z right okay so let's just expand this term and see what do we get we get this is equal to norm x minus y square plus mod lambda square into norm z square minus 2 times of real part of inner product z comma x minus y that is we are uh, considering the term or we are uh, rearranging uh, the term here in the previous slide if you see we have seen that uh, we had uh, the inner product was x minus y plus lambda z comma x minus y plus lambda z so if we uh, consider the brackets over x minus y that is this can be written as x minus y plus lambda z comma x minus y plus lambda z and using this and uh, combining the expression we get minus 2 into real part of z x minus y so that is norm of x minus y whole square was less than or equal to norm x minus y whole square plus mod lambda square into norm z square minus 2 times of real part of inner product z comma x minus y so we have done this exp expansion many a times so i think uh, the expansion is clear for you guys now we can cancel out this term right uh, so we get that two times real part of lambda into inner product z comma x minus y that is there is a lambda over here okay Mm, this will be less than or equal to mod lambda square into norm z square okay now next what we are going to do is we are going to consider lambda to be lambda is equal to we are supposing that or uh, let us choose lambda to be the term p into inner product z comma x minus y conjugate where t is a real number okay so what will happen when we replace the value of lambda we get two times into real part of lambda is t into inner product z x minus y conjugate into z comma x minus y this will be less than or equal to mod lambda square that is t square into modulus of inner product z comma x minus y conjugate square into norm z square okay so here this term is t into inner product z comma x minus y conjugate into z in a product z comma x minus y so this is nothing but modulus of z comma x minus y whole square so modulus value is a real number and also t is a real number so we can emit this real uh, term from here so when we substitute the value of lambda we get 2 into t into in a product modulus in a product z x minus y whole square is less than or equal to t square into modulus in a product z x minus y whole square into norm z square so i can cut cancel out one t from both the sides now 
as t approaches to 0 what do we get we can conclude that the modulus in our product z comma x minus y whole square will tend to 0 so from this what do we get we get as t approaches to 0 this whole term tends to 0 so we can conclude that the inner product will tend to 0 so we get inner product z comma x minus y tends to 0 now z was chosen arbitrarily run was uh, this was an element of l which was chosen arbitrarily so we can conclude that x minus y will be orthogonal to l okay now there is one more thing that which we can see that is if we have x can be written as x minus y plus y right x adding and subtracting y okay then what we are going to do is we are going to calculate norm of x square okay norm of x square will be nothing but inner product x comma x and what was x x was x minus y plus y comma x minus y plus y so from this we get uh, again expanding we'll get this is norm x minus y whole square and the last uh, second two terms combining we get norm y square and in between the terms will be in a product y comma x minus y uh, and in a product x minus y comma y now we have seen that in the previous proposition x minus y is always orthogonal to l and y was an element of l so these two terms will reduce to zero so this will be equal to norm x minus y square plus no y square okay this is a continuation or this is something that we can deduce easily from the previous proposition so let us just uh, recall our proposition once again the proposition was that for any closed subspace we can uh, find an element y such that it is orthogonal to uh, such that x minus y is orthogonal to l and that y forms the projection of the arbitrary element chosen in h so, so we have proved that for any uh, subspace l and uh, of the hilbert space h and an element x element of h x minus y is orthogonal to l if and only if y is equal to pl of x now our proposition states that there always exists a unique element y such that uh, that will become the uh, projection of any element of h and also x minus y is orthogonal to the uh, space close up space l now how can we choose the y uh, we can see that if we choose the element uh, y to be uh, i'll just show you how we can uh, choose the element y that is they are showing that there exists a unique y right so how can we choose the element y if we consider y to be summation of inner product x ei into ei where this set ei forms the basis ei is the orthonormal basis okay just remember it is the ortho normal basis so if it is the orthonormal basis we are choosing y to be summation in a product x ei into ei now uh, then let us just see what will be in a product x minus y into ei what will this value be we are replacing it uh, the term of y that is summation in a product x ei ei comma ei okay this will be nothing but in a product x ei minus summation in a product x ei into in a product ei over ei that is this is one only when i is equal okay the summation so this will be in a product x ei summation uh, all other in a product ei ei will be zero because the set ei is 
ei ej will be zero because the set ei is orthonormal so this will be nothing but zero that is x minus y is always orthogonal to ei and we have chosen x minus uh, set ei to be the orthonormal basis of the space l so from this we can conclude that x minus y is orthogonal to l so such a y always exists so this is how we can choose the element y uh, which was uh, mentioned in the that is which was mentioned in the proposition that there exists a unique y so you can choose y in such a manner and we can show that uh, if you choose such a y x minus y is always orthogonal to l and if x minus y is orthogonal to l we had seen in the beginning of the session that y is equal to pl of x so that's how we can interrelate these uh, uh, concepts and we can uh, always uh, we can conclude the proof of this proposition so uh, that's it just go through the proposition again clearly what we had done was we had proved that x minus y is orthogonal to l if and only if y is equal to pl of x and uh, in the end we had seen that if we choose a suitable y we can always find a unique y uh, which uh, satisfies the uh, condition that uh, x minus y is orthogonal to l and once we get that condition we can prove this proposition so that's it for today's session with this we'll wind up thank you stay home and stay safe